I'm Van. I'm sorry. That's Booby. And Jolpy and Ghosty. This is, how do you pronounce that? Machine Supremacy? The view. I was saying Machina, so. Yeah. From the end of the world. This sounds like another concept record. Hmm? Have we heard of this band before? Never. Oh. Never before. Okay, cool. Which means that the uh, Patreon is working, right? Because it's designed to get you to hear bands that yeah. you otherwise wouldn't hear. So, um, Does the name of this band sound like something that's like basically the, um, you know, where robots take over? Right. Yeah. Right, right, right. You give AI to these things. And yeah. Like so, yeah. So... You can get a song requested. The normal means just ask, hey, can you do this song? The other way you can get it requested is uh, via Patreon. So it's $1 at the gate. Gets you in there. By the way, we've got some interesting uh, exclusive Patreon videos that we we have posted. <laughs> Don't forget to peek in there. There's uh, like lots of stuff in there now. Yeah. We're, yeah. Po we're posting more every day. Yeah. We're giving you guys our um, our journey of our weight loss. We've actually lost quite a bit. I, well, I haven't checked again today, but... Well, well, the big thing is the behind-the-scenes stuff. Right. And uh, there's a there's one entitled Super Saiyan <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Super Saiyan Sorry that, that will be up in a day or two. Yeah. You guys aren't going to want to miss that. But um, it, it, 75 bucks gets you pushed right to the front of the line. Yeah. Which is what happened with Makane Supremacy. Mm -hmm. So we're doing that. Also, don't forget, for time topical political commentary, you can hit us up at Middle America with Vin and Sorry. Mm -hmm. And uh, where you can see why I, I am the most frustrating human being on the internet and why I'm so hard to love. Okay, Aww. so let's do it. All right, bloody voodoo dolls, this one's for you. Ready? And go. <laughs>
the the ending of the world he's saying look good and sweet no I think that that's actual recording um, from WikiLeaks one of the first WikiLeaks leaks was um, guys uh, gutting guy he was some Hellfire missiles <coughs> They shot up civilian from up top, and and he went down, and then everybody was crowding around him to help him, and then they sent Hellfire missiles and killed all those people. So that was that was like the first real <coughs> WikiLeaks sort of whatever. Like you you hear them talking on the mic and such, and they wow. were that's pretty you, know, you know it was all fun and games basically. You know that's you sick. could hear them talking so. I'm assuming that that's what it was because the theme um, oh. seems to be about war. Mm -hmm. So. Oh, it was. Oh, okay. Where, yeah. where did you get that it was about war? Well, for five billion souls incinerated. And in this, the doom of the gods. This was written in 2010, and then he talks about not having any wars due to religions anymore, or where he said, mm -hmm. or even just a world without religious war. So when mm -hmm. he's talking about the doom of the gods, it's the having to do war for the sake of these other gods who I'm assuming in his mind doesn't exist because later on he talks about climb the beanstalk to your imaginary guy or whatever right there. Mm -hmm. Climb the beanstalk when you die and meet the giant in the sky. Yeah. I mean I had this whole thing that it was about you know AI taking over so it was like this guy's thinking about the world and how the things are going 600 years of progress lost because of you because of human beings you know what I mean because of how we yeah. Wreck everything. Oh, scroll back up, babe. Um, can I get reparations Reparations for the abuse? I want some flying cards, a ticket to the stars, or even a world without religious wars. He wants to get away from the way that things have become because of what human beings have done to the planet. Um, but this bitch ain't stacked in my favor. Well, what was that to do with wars due to religion? I think it's just because re religion is made up of humans. Humans make religion, you know what I mean? Like, obviously, we believe that God started our religion... Um, but just from somebody else's point of view, it would be like, they're all he's started saying, by... He's saying because the AI war is a war of religion? No, no. I'm saying that human beings did this, and he's coming... I think that he's a human being thinking about this. So I was thinking... I thought it was saying that he was like, had this dream or like this thought, and he was thinking about, um... <clears throat> You know, 600 years of progress, all that's been lost because of how people are. And he say, look, he, he wants to get out of this before everything gets destroyed because he can see the end of the world is coming. Five billion souls incinerated in the doom of the gods. I thought, and when I was reading that, I was thinking, um, in the not in the doom of the gods, but like by the doom of the gods. Like the gods, the gods yeah, but sent that, said, which would be AI. He said in the doom of the gods. Yeah, but what does in the doom of the gods mean? Well, if it's, if it's global warfare due to religion then there's a sense in which the gods are doomed because the Christian god's gonna die and the Muslim god's gonna die when all Christians and Muslims die. Five billion souls incinerated in the doom of the gods. Yeah. So like in the face of the gods being doomed? Well, I... Say that another way. Well, he's talking about religious wars. So okay. people fight for their gods in religious wars. Mm -hmm. And if, you're, if you win, that means your god won. And if the other guy loses, that means his god lost. Mm -hmm. Well, in a... This is written in 2010, so I'm assuming the population was about 5 billion in 2010. Mm -hmm. So what he's saying is, if we have a global catastrophe where everybody dies, then everybody's gods lose because he yeah. doesn't. I don't think he believes that gods exist. Mm -hmm. So what he's saying is, you know, since people are the ones that made up gods, if everybody dies, then the gods are doomed because mm -hmm. there's nobody else to believe in them. Mm -hmm. um, so that that's kind of where I got, you know, and he's got a very sort of, you know, neo atheist <coughs> climb the beanstalk when you die, meet the giant in the sky, you know. You never open your eyes to, uh, to see the things you lose, you know. So it just, it just looks like that that's what he's talking about, like the humanity's penchant for self-destruction. And when he okay. says, I want some flying cars... I, I didn't take it that way. It's like he wants a flying car to escape. I just think he took it as, you know, when we were in the 80s talking about the future, everybody was saying, oh, there's going to be We could have been a lot cars. more further, further if we weren't fighting so many religious wars. R right. Which, yeah. of course, you know, our invasion of, it, of Iraq was not a religious war. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, I mean, 
Uh, neither were the wars in World War II. The <laughs> wars in World War II were not religious wars. Neither was the the havoc that the Soviet Union brought up on the on the planet. So, I mean, that, that's just a. I don't know. I, I just <laughs> the, the the last hundred, two hundred years have have seen the most bloodshedding we've ever seen, uh, ever. Mm-hmm. And those are not religious wars. Mm-hmm. World War One was not a religious war. Neither was World War Two. So right, right. That those two wars alone. I mean, they're called the war to end all wars. Those two wars alone accounted for um, uh, way more death for a single event than any you know crusade or whatever it was. Simply because we just didn't have the technology to inflict that much carnage onto other human beings. Mm-hmm. So that that's kind of you know, I you know I I think. The major issue or the next world war is not going to be a religious war. It's going to be a war of, you know, when I look over the pond and there's this whole Brexit thing and people are really tight and over here, you know, Brexit? Why not? You know, where Britain is exiting the European Union. Oh, oh, yeah. So yeah. people feel very, very strongly about it. And yeah. The nations kind of bifurcated, although in the last election seems to indicate that the vast majority of the nation wants to do the Brexit thing. Uh, my point is, I just think that uh, the next world war is going to be like a factional world war, where you have you know, like dude talking about the gulags and all that and all the rest of it and how we need to re-educate Trump followers and all that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the people that are reacting to I actually had to ban somebody from, from the Middle America channel because yeah. he's talking about killing people and all yeah. the rest of it. So, and that's so rare that you ban anybody. Yeah, I've never. I mean, we've got a complete and, and total mm-hmm. through and through racist in our in mm-hmm. our. Con- and I, you know, I let him say whatever he wants to say. He's not threatening anybody. Mm-hmm. But this guy was talking about, I'm gonna blow this guy away. Blah 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 blah. I'm like, all right, not okay. You're gone. So, yeah, that's. So my point is, I think the next war is gonna be one of those like, you may have thirty nations doing internal civil wars with each other. And the alliance then becomes whether or not you adhere to certain left policies or right mm-hmm. policies or whatever. You know, when you have groups like Antifa, things of that nature, right. it, it doesn't start like a global war of one nation against another. It actually starts wars within the nation itself. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and it, th- these guys, they're agitating and creating that sort of antipathy where people are like, oh, okay, let's see you do that to me. You know what I mean? So I don't think that this guy's dystopian vision of the future is completely accurate unless you're talking about you know people fighting each other you know what I mean mm-hmm. did you think there was going to be a female vocalist in here I did so I was did hoping I. there would be because there was a, there was a female on the cover yeah. but you know like if you hear song 9 is action girl you know like crouching camper hidden sniper murder is kind of productive mm-hmm. So uh, it just looks like it just looks like this is about war, um, and mm-hmm. war at the human level, where but at the same time, like maybe they introduce an AI person to give them an upper hand, you know, mm-hmm. or what do you call it, uh, uh, android, yeah, female to kind of tip the scales in mm-hmm. their favor, and so that's where the the album cover came from. Mm-hmm. I really like the, uh, what do you call that, the, the musicianship was pretty crazy. There was one part, like, particularly at the middle, where it reminded me of this video game I used to play, F-Zero, because, yeah. like, that's exactly how it sounded, like, that <laughs> little part in the middle, so, Are you playing uh, it? Are you doing yeah, it? I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try to find it, if I can, is this thing mute or what? No, I just unplugged it, but you gotta pull it down here. <laughs> It's got that like 16-bit uh, yeah, it, Nintendo sort of. Oh level. yeah, you're you know right. I mean? It does. Like, you know. Yeah, I mean, I didn't pick up on that, but until you pointed it out. And, but I liked the sound of it. It was it was a unique sounding song. Yeah, it's kind of like those distorted type of guitar ran through a synth, you know, mm-hmm. whatever. Um, and that just reminded me of like playing video games, you mm-hmm. know, particularly F Zero, yeah. because F Zero used to have this bomb soundtrack. I'll probably Google it for you at some point. Um, 
I, I think what he's talking about here, when he's talking about five billion souls, I think he's just saying, like, we're never going to figure it out. And the reason we're never going to figure it out is because these religious people climb the beanstalk when you die and meet the giant in the sky. Which is a pretty smart line. Well, why? What are you thinking? Because I think that's his way of talking about, you know, going to heaven, climbing yes. the beanstalk, and then, you know, you're going there to meet God. Yeah. Um, so God would be the giant in the sky. Mm -hmm. the, the, yeah. The double side of that, though, is that the giant in the song, Jack and the, in, the, in the story, Jack and the Beanstalk, was a bad guy. So there's a yeah. double entendre there. It's basically oh, sure, see. yeah. When you die, yeah. <laughs> That's meet, so funny. Meet him, yeah. You're gonna go, but you know. Because yeah. I was, oh, go ahead. Let me I think what he's saying is, if there is a god up there, he's a bad person. I see. Because when I was looking at it, I was like, well, I wonder why he said that. Because in the actual story, just climb the beanstalk when you die and meet the giant in the sky. No, people didn't believe that there was any in the story. People don't believe that there's any beanstalk, beanstalk, and they don't believe that there's a giant in the sky. There's just like this story this theory that that's what it is but jack actually believes that and then you know he ends up going and he does meet up with the but the with the giant but you're right the giant is a bad guy so i thought it was i was like so are they saying that it's true but i see your yeah i see what you're saying there yeah i just think he's yeah i think what he's saying is if there is a god then he well, must be bad when he said well you pave a way for your your savior what did he mean by that well, I think, it, so, you know, evangelicals, the worse things get in the world, the more happy they are because they believe that everything is going to get really terrible. Yeah, some so, evangelicals, yeah, uh, not all of them. Well, the vast majority of American evangelicals believe this. So, mm -hmm. you know, they believe that things have to get really terrible, then we're going to get raptured out of here, right. or whatever, whatever, which is one of the reasons where they may not be necessarily anti-war mm -hmm. because it paves a way you know we race towards the end of days and while you pave the way for your savior so it's like we're about to blow we're about to kill kill ourselves here wholesale and he doesn't believe that there's any savior coming to secretly rapture people neither do we by the way but he's right. saying so here you are doing all this for the sake of your religion or whatever oh. and it's gonna end up killing us all I fear the rationality of the faithfully insane. That's a pretty crazy line. Correct. 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 So yeah. there, there is, I'm glad that he was so honest about it, but I do think that there is a, a latent fear mm -hmm. among many neo-atheists. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think some of it is justified, but I think, I think some of it is self-inflicted. The, um, the stereotyping mm -hmm. of of all Christians or all theists as one type of thing and, and not wanting to have an actual rational conversation with them leaves you with a certain type of fear. Oh, it's yeah. like a uh, yep. right winger who only watches Fox News. So they're going to get a certain type of impression about Bernie Sanders or other Democratic mm -hmm. socialists, which is just completely fear based. Yep. And it's like, if you've never talked to the man, then you're at a disadvantage. Mm -hmm. So. That's kind of how I feel, and obviously not every atheist is like this. I mean, there's a lot of very respectful atheists, etc. I'm just saying, if you only have one particular perspective on religion and what it can do in the world, then of course you're going to be full of fear. Mm -hmm. You know, like, yeah. if you're in the western side of the planet Earth, I mean, you, you owe uh, the hospital, uh, the whole thing. You know, oh yeah, because it was originally talking. It was a hospitality house. Mm -hmm. That's where you got hospital from, right? Um, and because the New Testament and the Old Testament makes a big, big pride on hospitals. The same thing with the Ivy League schools, Harvard, Princeton. So, you know, I think I think this is accurate going after a specific type of Christianity. You could say, and I'm only saying Christianity because I'm a Christian, but you could easily talk about. Islam right. as well because right. Islam has their own version of a messiah coming oh, yeah. and all that and oh, it, yeah. it, it seems in the most in the largest sort of strain of Islam which is Sunni Islam it seems that the 
the order is basically the Mahdi, Dajjal, Dajjal is the Antichrist figure, and then Jesus come down and he's the Christ figure, and Jesus is the only one that can kill Dajjal. But the problem is, is that in order for the Christ to show up, there's got to be serious, serious, serious conflict in the world. Yeah. And so that would also apply to I Islam as well, although I'm not certain how deeply familiar this brother is with Islam to, to make so it apply to both groups. Yeah. Um, but I love the musicianship of the song. Didn't I, I do too. I do too. The, of course, the chorus was extremely repetitive, mm -hmm. um, but I liked it. So, you know, again. I just felt like it was missing some female vocals. Yeah, I think, you know, looking at the album cover, I really felt like, you know, okay. Mm -hmm. But maybe, you know, Action Girl and the rest of it, like, maybe. Maybe there will be female ones. Then she'll later. be introduced because yeah. her character is at least going to be introduced by Song 9. Right. Right. Um, what do you get the song? Ooh, oh, you go first. Uh, 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 this, nine. Th oh, nine. Th th this is interesting. Uh, so the six hundred years of progress uh, is probably an allusion to the Library of Alexandria, which got burned down, and he's he's putting he's pinning the. Uh, the destruction of the Library of Alexandria on Christians or religious people, which to me, I don't know, I thought the prevailing view was that Caesar did that. Mm. So, so yeah, I mean, these are these are some jabs at religion, and obviously mm. anytime there's jabs at religion, particularly Christianity, I mean, there's lots of things we can agree on, mm -hmm. that we would agree with the artist on, and things that we disagree with the artist on. Right. Um, particularly the whole concept of war and killing people is for religion, that's not what happened last century. It's just mm -hmm. not. It's just not. It's not me trying to defend Christianity. It's just Chairman Mao uh, and all the, hor the whole horrible things he did and Pol Pot and and uh, yeah the Soviets. They, they were not doing that because mm -hmm. they were motivated religiously. I'll tell you that right now. As a matter of fact, with some of them, it was the opposite. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. It was the anti-theism of Yermilion Yerlovsky. Yep. Um, and Chairman Mao and uh, Pol Pot, which led to literally millions of Christian people being killed, their mosques and, and synagogues and churches burnt and, or converted into re-education camps, mm. etc. So, eh, you know, I, I think that that's probably a simplistic view of history as far as the role of religion plays in history. But mm. I still think it's a good song because he was able to communicate his ideas pretty well. Again, he... Yes, I agree. The chorus was probably sung five to seven times, but I don't care because I really liked it. <laughs> and I also like the middle. All right, so what do you give it? Uh, 9.3. All right, there you have it. What do you give it? I already, I already break What'd it, you give it again? five minutes ago. I give it a nine. Okay. Well, that's pretty good. <laughs> All right. There you are. Hmm? Vin out. Sorry out. Gone.